Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Craig Malkin, a clinical psychologist and lecturer for Harvard Medical School. I'm also the author of Rethinking Narcissism, which is devoted to helping you understand and cope with narcissism in all its forms and all its relationships. I'm a little bit under the weather, as you can probably hear today, but I'm trying to fit this video in. Today, I want to talk about a question that came up. Somebody I was talking to asked me, how does echoism develop? So I want to say a little bit about echoism and how it develops. If you like my videos, please remember to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can see them when they come in and you get alerted that I've done a new one. For a reminder for anybody who hasn't been watching my videos, echoism you want to think of as a fear of special attention. Somebody who has echoism, I should also back up and say echoism is a trait. It is not a disorder, at least not in the mild range and not until things get really extreme might you see disorders, but think of it as a trait, as a fear of special attention. These are people who live life by the rule, the less room I take up, the better on self-report measure, on our self-report measure, there is only one self-report measure. They agree with statements like, when people ask me my preferences, I'm often at a loss. I'm not sure what I want or need for my relationships. I'm afraid of becoming a burden. So the fear, really, the central fear of echoism is fear of seeming narcissistic in any way. So how does this develop? Well, based on our research and looking at just different other trait measures, other measures of personality characteristics, like is somebody extroverted, are they introverted, are they more emotionally sensitive, are they less emotionally sensitive? There are ways that you can measure that, and we gathered all that information and related it to people who score high on echoism to see what the patterns were. And what came out of it was that somebody who struggles with echoism tends to be more emotionally sensitive. They might experience feelings more intensely, not always, but they trend in that direction. So you want to think of this somebody who comes into the world, who has a natural biologically based temperament, where they tend to experience feelings with a greater depth or greater intensity than maybe other people do. So think of this as a sensitive temperament, it, akin to highly sensitive persons, if you're not aware of what a highly sensitive person is, or that work by Elaine Aaron, I feel free to Google it, you'll find some information, but it's similar to what I'm describing now. If you take somebody with this kind of temperament and then you place them in an environment with, say, a narcissistic parent, this is what happened to me in many ways, where you have a parent who either is so loud and domineering and always needs to be the center of attention, that they can't leave any room for you, this person with a more emotionally sensitive temperament, or alternatively, that would be describing an extroverted narcissist. If it's a more vulnerable narcissistic presentation or introverted narcissist, this is the parent who you feel like you've got to walk on eggshells, not because they're going to explode, but everything has to sort of cater to their own emotional sensitivity. They act like everything is too much for them. It's always like they feel put upon in some way. It's obviously a very different presentation, but either way, this takes someone to an emotionally sensitive temperament, and it leaves them feeling like they cannot have too much impact. It's going to cause problems. They will be attacked. They will be criticized. This is a recipe for echoism. Another recipe for echoism, take that same generally sensitive temperament, put it in an environment with a parent who models echoism where this is a parent who says, now you don't want to get too much of a big head. I had a client whose mother often cautioned her, now don't get too full of yourself over this. Every time she had a moment of pride or celebration, as you can hear over time, it doesn't leave much room for those feelings. And the end result is this is somebody who worries that somehow if they actually let themselves have these feelings, that they're gonna seem narcissistic in any way. And in both instances, what it teaches somebody who feels things that more of that depth and more intensely is that it's going to challenge or even disrupt the relationship if they behave in those ways at all. So they're gonna be much more likely to watch their own feelings, watch their own reactions, and make sure that they never ask for too much, 
They don't turn to people with too much in the way of needs. And they even might bury their needs and feelings in order to protect that relationship. And in that way, echoism really is the exact opposite of extreme narcissism, where narcissists uh, are driven to feel special, exceptional, unique, often no matter what the cost to others in the extreme versions. This is where you see exploitation and entitlement, for example. Echoists, in contrast, are afraid of seeming narcissistic in any way. And you can see if you take a temperament like the one I'm describing and put it in those environments where they're made to feel like they have to be really cautious about how much self they have, that is a recipe for echoism. So I hope you found that helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to come back because I'm going to be sharing a lot more. Thanks.